Greetings fellow Nitro enthusiasts. Ryan Lutz here and today I want to demonstrate how I do maintenance on my clutches. So obviously Nitro racing clutches are a very important thing to keep your program running smooth and consistent where you're finishing races. First thing I want to do, I'm going to take apart the clutch. I want to examine the shoes. So I'll take all that, any shims that I have so I don't lose them, set them aside for now. And then I'll examine the shoes. I want to look if there's any aluminum that's kind of mushroomed up around the edges. And you're going to find in a lot of my videos, I use X-Actos for everything. And in this project, it's no different. So I like to take the X-Acto and kind of 45 the edges. Uh, get rid of any material that's kind of mushroomed over the edges here. Also on the fronts. Now, obviously, this clutch allows me to do this. Some clutches, as I'll demonstrate in a minute, don't allow this quite as easy. And so you might have to do a different method. I'll show you that in a second though. But basically I even like a slightly duller knife for this because if it's too sharp, it seems like it actually cuts into the aluminum too easy and isn't as easy to scrape away the material. <clears throat> but you'll find on, uh, depending on the type of clutch, some clutches, the shoe rides right up against the flywheel. And if this starts mushrooming over, it can actually drag against the flywheel causing your clutch not to work properly and your engine not to run properly. And then you feel like your tune's off and things are running on because the clutch is staying engaged instead of disengaging how it's supposed to be. So this is an important thing to do every, every hour of running or so, at least. I'll do this before every single main. I go through and take a look at the shoes, clean off any materials. And I'll show you on a clutch that's a little bit more worn right now. Uh, this one I probably used during a, a practice session or something because looks like I didn't clean it the last time or recently so there's just diff there's more mushrooming around the edges and you can actually see on this one how the shoe goes right up against the next one so you can't really clean the front of it too easy so this one's actually better to take apart when you're trying to clean it so this is an alpha clutch and I'll demonstrate that really quick with this tool just twisting it tearing it apart Okay, then we have the shoe, and I like to clean off the black soot that's kind of developed on it. Okay, and then again, I take an X-Acto a lot of times, and I'll just set the, the shoe down, and kind of scrape away at it. And so what I'm trying to do is create like a nice little 45 right there. Just smooth it out, get rid of the excess material. Uh, the other thing you can do if you don't want to use the X-Acto, is if you have a Dremel with a sanding type drum, kind of very nice fit. Okay, and that could do the same thing. It's all cleaned up, and I mean that works quicker if you have a Dremel access. That obviously works really well. When I'm at the track, a lot of times I don't have the Dremel with me. Exacto works really well. So that's how I examine, clean up my shoes, make sure that everything's working freely. Um, I can also take like a screwdriver or whatnot, and I'll kind of just flick each shoe to make sure everything is working freely, nothing's bound up. And then it's time to reassemble your clutch. So then we're looking at how to shim the clutch properly. So to start, I'm not gonna put any shims and kind of demonstrate that really quickly. Um, also, sorry, clean up your inside your clutch bell. I like to use just simple green on a microfiber towel, and wipe it all off, wipe off the bearings, make sure they're good. As far as replacing bearings, I I use the TKO special black blue seal. So there's blue seal on one side, black on the other. Uh, the black goes on first, and then the black sticks out on the other end. And these generally last a good gallon, so they're really good clutch well bearings. You can't just get any ordinary 5x10 bearing because this is a very high load stressed area for clutch for bearings, for 5x10 bearings. And these bearings actually have a different kind of cage internally that allows them to withstand you know, all the, the heat and the amount of this force that they're being put through in this application. 
So these variants I find re work really well. I'll replace them before I go to a big race, use them out th throughout practice and qualifying, and then I change them out before the mains. And if they still feel good, I'll put them in for a practice session or just keep them for later. So now here I have no shims that I put behind the bearings, and you can see that it actually spins freely. Now this is going to depend on what kind of clutch nut you're using and clutch you're using. Sometimes if you have no shims behind the bearings, the clutch bell will actually touch the shoes a little bit or touch the clutch, and it, you need to shim it away from it a little bit. So I'm going to put one shim to start. These are five by seven shims that go onto your crankshaft. And tighten that up to see how the, the amount of play looks. And this clutch actually, it doesn't require too many shims. It just requires that one two tenth shim that I just put on it and it's already just about perfect. So you got about one to two tenths of play right there. But I want to demonstrate to you what too tight is and how you can rectify that as well. So I'm going to put another two tenth shim on. Clutch bell back on. Tighten it up. And you're going to see it's not spinning anymore and I have no play. This is a problem. So even though I can, it'll spin a little bit, don't think this is okay because this is an item that gets hot. This is metal that gets hot. When metal gets hot, it expands and this is just going to get tighter and this is going to cause your clutch bearings to blow up way quicker. So now let's pretend though that your clutch belt is touching either your flywheel or your shoes and you need to have it shimmed away further for it not to touch but once you've done that it's too tight after you tighten this screw down here's one way to fix that problem instead of getting an entire new assembly that's all how it's supposed to be is you can actually take little three by five shims and put those on the screw that you put into the crankshaft and what a 3x5 does, that 5 mil outer actually slides inside the 5 mil inner diameter of the bearing. And what it effectively does is extend your crankshaft. So I still have those same two shims initially that made this too tight. But by putting that 3x5 shim there, I have play again. And it's free. So that's a way to extend the crankshaft and allow you to... Have more shimming options. So again, that's a three by five millimeter shim. So that's how I shim and maintenance my clutches for nitro. Obviously, nitro racing, there's a lot more to it. Keeping your engine performance proper is very important, and the clutch is a big part of that. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something. Come back for more videos. Catch you later.